remains fixed on Paris. France is tonight a police state, and there is concern over ISIS infiltrating Syrian refugees. And of course, the big question, how can the world rid itself of the Islamic State? Now, before you listen to one more politician tell you what we need to do, you need to know what politicians knew about ISIS three years ago and the actions they took anyway. This is a reality check you won't see anywhere else. On the military front, our coalition is intensifying our airstrikes, more than 8,000 to date. We're taking out ISIL leaders, commanders. There is no doubt the U.S. and its allies must stop ISIS. After the Paris attacks that left 129 dead, more than 350 people injured, and an entire nation in lockdown, there is no doubt that ISIS has to be stopped. Now, shortly after the Paris attack, ISIS fighters recorded this new video claiming they will soon strike the United States, including Washington, D.C. But look, there's no question that ISIS is a serious threat to people everywhere, especially to people in Iraq and in Syria, who have been decimated by that terror group. In Syria alone, 9 million people have been displaced or fled the country, which makes what I'm about to share with you so infuriating. Well, seven pages of a secret Pentagon document were leaked earlier this year, put online by the organization Judicial Watch. The report is from 2012, and specifically, it explains the dangers of what the U.S. government is doing in Syria at the time. Remember, in 2012, ISIS, as we know them today, did not exist. Page three of those leaked pages state three facts about the situation in Syria. A, internally events are taking a clear sectarian direction. B, the Salafists, the Muslim Brotherhood, and AQI, or Al-Qaeda in Iraq, are the major forces driving the insurgency in Syria. And C, the West, Gulf countries and Turkey, they support the opposition, while Russia, China, and Iran support the regime. So to be clear, our Department of Defense in 2012 stated that the Russians, Chinese, and Iran were supporting the Assad regime and that the United States and Gulf partners like Qatar and Saudi Arabia were supporting the opposition to Bashar al-Assad. But the DOD also made it clear that the major forces driving that opposition were the Muslim Brotherhood, Al-Qaeda in Iraq, and something called the Salafists. Now stay with me. Because if you don't know the term Salafist, that movement is an ultra-conservative orthodox movement within Sunni Islam. The doctrine is summed up as taking a fundamentalist approach to Islam. Sound familiar? Salafist is the same belief system as Wahhabism, from which ISIS draws their radical, violent, merciless beliefs. So now let's go back to that document. Because after reading page 5 in section 8C, the Department of Defense warns this, quote, If the situation unravels, there is a possibility of establishing a declared or undeclared Salafist principality in eastern Syria. And this is exactly what the supporting powers to the opposition want in order to isolate the Syrian regime, which is considered a strategic depth of Shia expansion in Iraq and Iran. So what you need to know is that according to this leaked DOD report, opposition forces, the United States, the Saudis, Jordan, Qatar, and more, they wanted a Salafist or fundamental Islamic group to take over eastern Syria in order to isolate and overthrow the Syrian president Bashar al-Assad's regime. It was a plan to overthrow Assad, but three years later, Assad is still in power, and now the most violent, radical terror group in the modern world is entrenched in parts of Syria and Iraq while exporting terror to Europe. So here's the real question. Why would we as the American public believe any politician who claims that they have a plan for what to do with ISIS when not one leader has ever acknowledged our role in the creation of that very problem? That's Reality Check. Let's talk about that tonight on Twitter.